This is the Samsung A15 5G. Just above the entry level Samsung A05, the A15 is targeted at those who want a budget phone but don't want the phone at the very bottom. It also happens to be the cheapest 5G Samsung available right now. At $200, the A15 is going to be popular, especially with people who are looking at buying their first smartphone or for people who are just really looking at something that won't break the bank. So in this review, I'm going to be taking a look at all the different features of the Samsung A15 to figure out whether it's worth $200 or if you should look elsewhere. I'm upwards and let's get into this video. The Samsung A15 is equipped with a 6.5 inch AMOLED Full HD 90Hz refresh rate display, a 50 megapixel main camera, 30 megapixel selfie camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro lens. It also comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It packs in a 5000 mAh battery and for the CPU it comes with the MediaTek Helios G99 chip with 5G. The A15 also supports expandable storage along with dual SIM for added flexibility. The second SIM slot actually doubles as a micro SD slot so you can only choose between having a dual SIM or a SIM and an SD card. Design-wise, the A15 has a plastic body with a glass screen. The camera layout is meant to look like the S-series line of phones, which is a trend that Samsung has been implementing on all their A-series phones. However, the actual material of the back cover is nothing like the S-series phones, fully made out of plastic and a huge fingerprint magnet. At the front, we have a teardrop display and a slightly thicker chin, which results in an uneven bezel around the whole phone. The sides have a slight curved bump around the buttons, making the phone a bit more grippier and ergonomic to hold. It's safe to say that this phone is quite comfortable to hold and won't be slipping anytime soon. The A15 rocks the MediaTek Helio G99 chip, which is from 2022. And for a $200 phone, this chip actually performs surprisingly well. Navigating around the phone is smooth and apps launch within a few seconds. It comes equipped with 4GB of RAM, which is pretty much the baseline for Android phones these days, and it shows. Trying to switch apps quickly can result in reloading or some laggy performance as the phone tries to keep up along with a few drop frames here and there. But as long as you don't push it too hard, you can have a pretty decent experience on the A15. I tested the A15 with S49 and Genshin Impact and surprisingly, it managed to run both games at a steady frame rate. S49 was running at what looks to be about 720p and 30 frames per second, but the game ran smoothly without lag or frame drops. Genshin Impact took a couple minutes to load and ran mostly steady at low graphics, with about a 480p resolution and 30 frames per second. But what surprised me was the fact that this game could actually be played without lag. If you try to raise the graphics, the game will start to crumble and with enemies on screen, some frames do start to drop, but overall running around in the world was smooth for the most part. The Samsung A15 is equipped with a triple camera array, with a 50 megapixel wide camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel macro and a 13 megapixel selfie camera. To be perfectly honest, no phone at $200 is going to have a good camera. And even though the A15 brags about its 50 megapixel camera, it really isn't that good. By default, the A15 shoots 12 megapixel shots, which in good lighting are average at best. Turning on the 50 megapixel mode, it really doesn't make the shots look any better. And as soon as we start hitting sunset, the image quality starts to crumble. Phone companies love to brag about megapixels, but in reality, they only tell part of the story. Megapixels refer to the maximum resolution a sensor can take in. However, you need a lot of light to be able to take advantage of resolution. The issue with these cheaper phones is that they have tiny sensors that cannot take in a lot of light, resulting in a very grainy blurry mess when you try to take a photo unless you have incredible lighting. The ultrawide is the same story with very poor images and dynamic range. Colorwise, the old Samsung-ish with a sparkle of saturation, but nothing detailed or precise. The 2 megapixel macro lens is pretty much garbage and unless you have great lighting, it's pretty much a pixelated image every time you take a shot from it. The selfie camera is a 13 megapixel sensor which does a better job than the 5 megapixel and 2 megapixel cameras on the back. And while it did over sharpen massively, it managed to retain a decent amount of dynamic range which can be seen in the sky. There isn't any image stabilization on any of the sensors which does result in some shaky footage when we take videos and more blurry photos when you're not steady. Videos are limited to 1080p at 30fps or slow mode to 120fps, so don't expect anything more with these cameras. In all honesty, you're not going to be buying the A15 for its cameras, with only the main and selfie camera barely being usable. So when it comes to the Samsung A15's cameras, they're decent at best when it comes to good lighting. But as soon as the sun starts to go down, the camera system pretty much disintegrates.
the A15's display is actually better than most of its competitors, especially at $200. With a Full HD AMOLED display with up to a 90Hz refresh rate, the A15's display is sharp, crisp, and vibrant. While it may not be the most color accurate or the brightest, capping out at 800 nits, it still holds its own against most of its competitors and is certainly easy on the eyes. The full resolution makes everything look clear and the AMOLED panel gives great contrast no matter what content you are viewing on the A15. The 90Hz refresh rate makes scrolling and swiping smooth when the processor can keep up. Equipped with a massive 5000mAh battery, you won't have any issues running out of juice, being able to last 2 days with light usage. In terms of charging speed, the separately sold power adapter is limited to 25 watts, which will take a couple of hours to charge the massive battery from 0 to 100%. Shipping with Android 14 and with 4 generations of major operating system upgrades and 5 years of security updates, the A15 promises long term support. The Samsung A15 is the budget phone with a little bit of performance, pretty bad cameras, but overall a decent experience. And it's perfect for budget conscious people who are looking at getting a phone that they just want to be able to use all the time. With a good display, decent performance and a huge battery, the Samsung A15 is the right phone for budget conscious users who are active on their phones all the time. So that wraps up my review on the Samsung A15 5G. I'm Upwards and if you enjoyed this review, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.